Hey everybody, uh, I'm here with Corey and welcome to uh, Monroe Live YouTube. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the images that showed up here this morning, actually. I think it was this morning. On Twitter. Yeah, on or, Twitter. Or on X. Or X, that's right. Today it's X. Like yesterday it was Twitter. We got to try and keep up. I got to try and keep up. So anyways, uh, kind of a cool picture of the, um, of the cyber truck wrapped to look a little bit like... Uh, like a lightning, um, kind of interesting. And you can tell that it's wrapped because you can't have these uh, bright lines. So these lines here would be from a reflection or what have you. But you can see that they're bright. They, you can't, that doesn't happen. Um, that only happens uh, if the doors are closed and there's no conflicting uh, uh, angles and whatnot. So it is uh, definitely geared toward um, trying to look like uh, an F-150 Lightning. Um, we were looking at this a little bit ago, Corey and I, and why don't we look at that, whatever it is, nameless casting that's down here, Oop, other direction. Um, this is where we started looking and saying, hmm, I wonder what the heck that is. I mean, we can see there's a bolt hole here, something there. All the bolts Two pins, there. yeah. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Five bolts are sitting there. One, two, three, four. There's probably in a fifth one around here. We're trying to figure out what that was. I was looking at it, this being maybe the radius of the shock tower, um, but what the heck that is, no clue. So my guess is that it goes down uh, underneath where the frunk will be. So if you yeah. look right here, the yeah. shape of it, it's not really wide enough and there's not space because of the thermal system right here yeah. for it to be an upper cross car member. And you really don't need that big of a structure. Yeah. And I think you're right, that contour most likely shapes around the lower portion. Now in the Model Y and the Model 3, there is a, an extrusion that goes across and, and connects the left and right yeah. shock tower at the lower end and at the top. I think they're using this large casting to give it a lot of cross car strength. Yeah. It also could support the powertrain um, because the powertrain for the front of the vehicle will be hung. It could be one or two mounting provisions. Now the Model 3 and the Model Y secure the powertrain to the back corners of the structure. If you remember Sandy, there was yeah. spots for them to right. mount. Um, what's your thought? It, it definitely is strong enough to carry a lot of load. I think it this could, could, could carry, carry power elephant. train load. Yeah. So I, I don't think that, I, th I think we're looking at it in the wrong attitude. Maybe it's upside um, down. Maybe it's upside down. Maybe it's, maybe if this is carrying part of the weight of the uh, powertrain system, maybe it should be standing up. But I know one thing, go down, uh, sorry, up down here. I think it's, I think that came off from something down below here. Um, whatever, wherever it came from, we can't find the brother. So I'm thinking that somehow it's, it's in here underneath that, um, that front fascia or bumper. Yeah, and I don't remember the shape of component on the video where we saw the, remember we saw yeah. a picture? Yeah. It had a steel cradle. Right. And this part is too big for it to be a contributing member um, I just don't remember seeing it from that underbody shot that I think uh, Jordan and I looked at. So I'm guessing it's at a secondary level. Maybe yeah, this somewhere, level. somewhere in here, whether it's vertical or horizontal, it's somewhere buried um, underneath the uh, yeah. underneath the frunk, which gets us to the next thing. We're staring right at it. Yeah, that this is thermal system. Most likely a liquid cooled condenser right there, or a chiller. Um, the line configuration is similar to a Model 3, a Model Y, and a Model S, but this shape right here is, is the rubber lines to account for the vibration of the high voltage AC compressor, but you can't see it except for this tiny piece of aluminum right here. Mm. Um, so I think, Sandy, I don't know what you think here. I think it's mounted sideways back here because you can see it turns back to aluminum here. So you'd have aluminum line running to the compressor. This is for vibration. And then back into the aluminum lines running into the thermal system. I think the configuration is different because I see a chiller or liquid cool condenser. It looks like another chiller or liquid cool condenser there. And this to me looks like a bottle. Of some sort, yeah. yeah. 
Um, what, what I don't see is um, this is not identical to what we've seen in the Y and the S and the 3 and everything else out there. This has been um, put together a little bit differently than anything we've seen before. And it could be because it's a bigger product and it's going to have a bigger or say a higher duty cycle. Yeah, another thing I noticed is the single uh, assembly right here for your windshield wiper. So you can see the windshield wiper come up, Sandy, and you have yeah. one. So this big, this whole unit is mounted up to the top of mm. the left shock tower. Yeah. And now it's the big question is exoskeleton or traditional build. Now I've already got speared on the internet by a few people about a month and a half ago when I saw the Giga castings, the body side inner and outer welded together like a traditional vehicle. Now, Sandy, you're the manufacturing pro. Can you talk about the, particularly the structure of the stainless steel and how it's contributing to load or how it's not? Well, at the end of the day, can we back that out? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this the way it is right now, okay? So you can see the Giga castings are here. And, um, and then you can see up here, uh, there's, there's some other parts. These parts are what you'd normally see in a conventional build. And this would be the, what they call the body in black. In, in other words, the body in white is what you see on the outside. The body in black is hidden. And right in here, you're looking at this piece right here. That's the, uh, that's the A-pillar. That's where your door is going to hook onto. This is where it's you've got crash worthiness, crash crash worthiness issues. You have it in here. You got the roof um, um, tie coming up to the B pillar right here. Now this is telling me that um, this has an inner framework that it would be basically the the body inner, and so consequently we're looking at something that is not the same as what I was hoping to see. What I was hoping to see was a true example of, of, uh, of uh, an exoskeleton. This is a skeleton right here. Now, why did they do that? My guess is rollover, crash, mm -hmm. uh, crash worthiness, and all kinds of other things. And the reason for that is right here. This is, uh, without a question of a doubt, I, I don't even need to see the, um, uh, a closer picture. This is going to be boron steel, uh, hot stamped steel, I should say. So ultra high strength, most likely. Yeah, ultra high strength. And, um, and I can see here that there's weld marks and here. There's... So this thing is going to be like bulletproof, literally. There's no way that anybody's going to crash this and, uh, and have yeah. an issue. But at this point, there's no stainless steel here no there's no exterior <clears throat> yet if you put the suspension on this put a battery in it the motors in it put the seats in it you could probably drive around i'm sure you could just fine well as long as the software would let you do it but yeah. but from a from a drivability standpoint this thing is rugged all by itself right now yeah and a little bit of history on the use of ultra high strength steel there's been a lot of tests that have been required by either IIHS, there's a roof crush test, mm. that are much more Roll stringent over. than they were. There's uh, FMVS-226 for ejection mitigation. And then there's SORB, the small overlap rigid barrier test. And that puts a tremendous amount of, of pressure on the A and B pillar that was not there 15, 25 years ago. There were vehicles that were completely aluminum in the 90s, like the Audi A8 D3 platform. They have since added in more and more and more steel because yeah. they couldn't pass these tests with the acceptable cross section. So Sandy can talk a little bit about this. With a cross section like this, that tiny little A pillar, if you're using aluminum or some sort of new, unique exoskeleton <sighs> structure that's not boxed, even the BMW i3 had a woven carbon fiber tube. Remember and it that? was filled with structural foam. Yeah. So this is a very a sensitive part of the car. From a crashworthiness standpoint, I, I, this is where I would over-design if it was up to me. And the reason for that is because I want to pass SORB, and Corey just talked about that. I definitely want to make sure that the occupants are taken care of. 
So when this gets crushed, there's going to be crushed cans out here that'll protect it to some degree. The sorb, uh, we don't know the strategy yet, but my guess is that it is going to shoot the wheel out of the wheel well and wherever it wants to go. But the, the wheel wells are quite large, so that would be probably the right thing to do. And then over here, um, this is your first line of defense. I don't want the door popping open, so my A pillar and my B pillar, that's where the hinges are. And I want to make sure that when there's a crash, this is going to be definitely the most rigid thing that I could possibly imagine. Now, I was, like I say, hoping for something a little bit different, but uh, at the end of the day, this could be why it took so long to get the, the Cybertruck into the marketplace. It just didn't work quite as well as they were hoping for. So in essence, they had to go yeah. and back to plan B. So you have the huge casting in the front, which is very similar to the Model Y in that it encapsulates both wheel wells all the way out to where the crush can is. And then it does continue along to the left and right side. So it's one casting for the front. You've seen those castings in pictures of drones at Tesla, you know, at Tesla's factory. But the rear, the cross car section here in another image that we looked at showed a stamped welded assembly. And now I can pull that picture up, but it looks like you have two large castings, one on the left and one on the right, that make this kind of X shape. I do believe that the rear structure here, the outer stainless steel uh, shell or exterior will tie in some of this structure to, to kind of box it out. Well, but this is a significant casting which can carry its own load yeah. from the back of the C pillar down into the shock tower. So see that Sandy right there? Yeah, right. And then it's coming out and connecting to the point which with that touches. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm positive that the stainless steel uh, skin is going to be structural. Um, they, uh, Elon made uh, a lot of uh, a lot of predictions on that, and uh, and quite frankly, I think that the outside skin on this vehicle is going to be pretty dramatic. I believe that the tie-in between the uh, structure you can't see, the black metal, uh, and that would include the castings and the outside skin, and we can call that uh, body and white. That sort of stuff is going to make a gigantic difference. This thing is going to be extremely rigid. Uh, there's no, no, no question about it. This is going to be an extremely rigid product. So if we go to, oh, let me. I think, let's go to the, this one. Which one? Yes. Okay, so. so Sandy, this one shows the fact that the dash is stamped. It's not plastic, but notice this. You can see the color of the, of the body side inner and outer because mm. it's a clamshell that's welded together. It's not, yeah. just an, it's not just an inner, it's not just an outer. So you can actually see that it's a boxed section of most likely ultra high strength steel. It's not aluminum, but this is a stamping that is either bonded or welded. I don't know if it's steel or aluminum. I would say, probably. I would say it's probably aluminum because right here, I don't need as much as what I need right there. And the, the, this, yeah. this definitely is gonna be boron. And, yeah, so, notice the triangle right here yeah. is a separate piece. So a lot of pictures we see the triangle that draws it down to there. Um, that's something that I noticed in this image, but it looks like this is, a, is one casting right there, but it's a stamped weldment all the way here. So it's kind of a boxed stamped weldment mm. section to tie in the left and right. And then you can see through showing that the battery will be structural. Well, and it also, from a, from a assembly standpoint, they're probably gonna also bring in the seats, the carpet, the body harnesses and everything else up from the bottom and bring it in just like they did on the Model Y, which was like brilliant. And uh, it's, it's extremely successful for them too. Uh, from a cost standpoint on the factory floor, I get rid of a ton of different uh, stations on the main assembly line. And that's what really costs you is the, the main assembly line is also always a problem. Yeah. yeah, so this is where that casting could go across. It's either right here, see one, two, three, yeah. four, or yeah. down here because it had those cut up. I'm guessing it's more down here. I, I think this is, I look at that curvature right here 
and um, and I I see some bosses. I don't see any true holes here, but 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 I, but that curvature looks. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to know anyway. We we have um, we have quite a few of these things on order. We have like five, I think. Um, and I'm told that uh, some of the guys who've got early Tesla cyber trucks that are coming in, um, they want to see it torn apart. And maybe I can, uh, you know, get down on my hands and knees and kiss rings or whatever I need to do. I'm going to I'm going to do it so we can get in an early uh, uh, an early build of this. And quite frankly, on Thursday, I think it's Thursday. Yeah. I'm leaving or Friday. I can't remember right. which Friday. We're leaving for the uh, Tesla takeover, and I'll see a ton of very happy uh, Tesla owners. Plus, I'm going to get the opportunity to meet May Musk. So that's for me. That's the big deal. I'm uh, I'm really excited in, in in having the ability to meet her. She's quite the gal. So anyway, this kind of this kind of a shot right here tells me this is definitely. So, not it's not exactly what what he what what Elon really wanted, but this, uh, this is going to be a rugged uh, a rugged product. This is one of their latest photos released by Tesla officially on Investor Day. So this pro, this represents, mm. I think, one of the furthest along. But I think that um, I think that for the most part, Tesla's really done some amazing things. Uh, we've heard lots of speculation. I thought we were going to see about 350 miles out of this. Someone has come uh, put in a, in a... 331. Yeah. And I thought this was going to be... I was hoping that this would be about three tons, but it sounds like it may be closer to four, um, which it is what it is. So I guess that the vehicles will weigh no less than 6,000 pounds for tax purposes. Right. Because you got to be over uh, six thousand pounds right. to qualify. So that's three tons. Three tons. But I'm thinking it'll land right around sixty-eight hundred pounds because the Rivian is over seven thousand. The Hummer is like nine thousand. But those are both body-on-frame vehicles. So you not only have a body, then you have a frame, then you have the suspension, and the Rivian even has cradles. <clears throat> so this will be much more efficient in that you have the Giga casting in the front. The two giga castings in the side of the rear. You have no frame. You don't have all those mating interfaces. <clears throat> you also have an efficient structural battery pack. So I think we'll see a battery pack that is similar to the Model Y 4680 pack, but even advanced a little bit. Well, they're calling it the new Cyber, cyber Cell. Yeah. Well, I think the Cyber Cell refers to the improved uh, watt hours per kilogram. I'm wondering if it's the dry cell that we saw when we went through the factory. I'm wondering if they, uh, the dry anode is, uh, is what calls it the cyber cell. I know they're working on it. Yeah. Well, they, they, they showed it to us. I mean, we were there in, when was that, May or May? March. March. So I knew I did an imminent. So that, at, at the end of the day, that is probably the, um, that's pro that may be what they're thinking. And I just thought of that just now. I so. think the limiting factor for them to be able to produce the cyber trucks will be their ability to produce 4680 cells to go in it. Because right now, when we were in Berlin and we were in Texas, every single Model Y that I saw actively be, being put together had a 2170 cell right. pack. They yeah. all had the old packs. I never once with my own eyes saw a structural battery pack go in. They've shown it. We own one. We tore one down. They exist, but they're kind of like unicorns right now. And they yeah. just announced like a couple months ago, that they finally made 10 million 4680 cells in the Texas factory. And 10 million divided by about 1,000 cells per vehicle is how many vehicles? Oh, that would be 10,000 10, yeah. 10, vehicles. So 10,000 vehicles is not a heck of a lot. Um, but if, I don't know when that article was written, I don't know how much production is going on after that, yeah, that maybe, maybe this is where we're going to be seeing. Um, it was June 17th. June, that's like a, that's a month. Yeah. So a lot can happen in a month. So I, I think that, I think that probably they're cranking up so that they can launch this and, and have 4680s in all of them. You'll need probably twice as many cells for a cyber truck. Oh. You're going to need 
they had what about 800 830 or whatever in a in a model y you'll need 1600 to 2000 cells in a cyber truck to give it a decent amount of of, of range well the the thing that we've we've heard several different uh, numbers as to how many kilowatt hours are in this now the cyber truck has a very short overhang and what we mean by that is the distance from the front of the bumper to the wheel is very short. F-150 has a relatively short overhang. The Ram and the Silverado is slightly larger. Sometimes it's a styling thing. We did a lot of work with trucks, Sandy, in the past. Mm. And this overhang used to be really large on right. some vehicles. Um, but you, you don't want just wasted material for no reason. You need it to protrude out enough to shape it for aerodynamic reasons. Um, but this really limits because it's a cab forward design. What we mean by cab forward, the cab and the windshield go so far forward that the hood is very short on this. So you can see the ceiling, the ceiling surface on the hood is very wide. It goes way out here. So I believe, Sandy and I were talking about this, I believe that it'll be the width of golf clubs, but it'll be much less deep than yeah. the uh, F-150 for sure, the Silverado for sure, the Rivian, Rivian may have more, it may have more room more than volume. Rivian, more yeah. volume, but in a different shape. What yeah. do you think, Sandy? I think that's probably true. Uh, the Rivian is, depending on you using the cargo space in back of the rear seats uh, for golf clubs and things like that. This one here, um, you might be able to get two sets of golf clubs, one stacked on top of each other, but you got the whole back end and it's got that timbre door. So I think that I think that this is a good place to put. Mm, it's not it doesn't have that much room. It's not going to be filled with room, but uh, I don't think that Tesla would put anything onto the marketplace without some sort of a frunk. It's their kind of trademark icon to every 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 different product that they push out. So to me, I think this is going to be enough for them to uh, bring to the marketplace. But from, uh, I will tell you, the one thing that I do like a lot about the F-150 is the ability to get bags of sand or concrete out of that thing. And from a worker standpoint, that's a really big deal. Um, uh, I, li I like that, uh, that aspect. But this, like I said, I I've said this about a dozen times, I think the Rivian the Lightning and the Cybertruck are not competing for the same people. I think that the Lightning is a product that's made for construction workers. I think that this is made for the outdoors kind of guy that, uh, that um, is going to be taking tents and whatnot. He's gonna go camping and whatever with this. And the Rivian is probably the best, I think, um, uh, home truck, if you like. I, I don't think I'd want to use it like I would a F-150 or um, a cyber truck, but I know one thing for sure. My wife thinks that uh, this is the best vehicle she's ever had in her whole life, save the Model Y. Can, can so, I add a little bit to that, Sandy? Sure, go ahead. So when we're out and about at these expos, we were in California at the Electrify Expo. We were in Vancouver and talk to some Tesla owners there. The most common thing I hear is, oh, I have a Model 3, but I'm waiting for my Cybertruck. Yeah. I have a Model X, but I'm waiting for my Cybertruck. I drive a Mach-E, but I have a Cybertruck on order. A lot of the conquests that Tesla is getting are from other EV owners that are drooling at the capability and the yeah. size and the range and the function you get from a truck but I think they're not traditional truck buyers. I think they're people who want it for reasons that are that are beyond Esoteric. what you use it, what yeah. you need a truck for. And I think Rivian is about Rivian has this thing with their outdoorsy branding, yeah. where it's kind of that Patagonia culture, right? Where they have their adventure charging stations set up in state parks, and you have crazy. Uh, crazy articulating suspension for off-roading. So I think that's one thing you kind of left out is the mm. capability of the Rivian, I yeah. think will be way more than the Cybertruck. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. 
too much about that. I, I will tell you that this is going to have a lot of capability. I'm looking at the size of those wheel wells and the wheels themselves and everything else that's ever, that, that Tesla's ever come out with. Like I said, I think the reason this never showed up in the marketplace is twofold. One, they went down the um, exoskeleton route and it didn't quite work out for them. And uh, two, I think they, uh, they're trying really hard to make sure that this is going to be able to um, do as much as, as much as possible for that, uh, that off-roading experience. So we're all gonna wait and see and see what happens, but when we do get this first vehicle, we are definitely gonna be taking this um, off-road. I definitely wanna see what it'll do um, I'm not obviously going to do rock cr crawling and whatnot. We don't have anything like that here, but we do have, the last thing I'll do is uh, take it over the logs like I did the Rivian. And I will tell you, uh, the logs, the Rivian right now is the best off-road vehicle I've ever had. I want to see what this will do for me. Okay. So. Sandy, we're up on time. Yep. Okay. Well, anyways, thanks very much for watching. Um, hope this was informative. Uh, we're all kind of guessing and uh, keeping our fingers crossed for uh, for the Tesla Cybertruck. And when we get one, you know, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much for watching uh, from Corey and I. We'll see you. Thank you. Bye.